JJ, what's up, man? It's good to see you here. It's good to see you. Thanks for stopping by, man. Oh, G shirt, very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. You know, trying to represent for PCDIY, that's what we're doing here at Maker Fair. Just trying to kind of show people a little bit about why you do want to build, right? What's the state of the PC in 2014? A lot of people, you know, you guys are diehard. You guys totally know why you want to build, why you should be building, why it's a superior experience. But we're trying to talk to a lot of people here about the benefits, the different form factors, the different experiences, and we're kind of showcasing a little bit of everything off about why you should be considering building a PC or you know, I've been saying that for years and years, and I'm going to continue to say it. We've got a bunch of awesome, you know, like kill your console type videos. We're showing what you know the advantages of PC gaming. Yeah. And just the advantages of doing it yourself and knowing that you did it yourself. Yeah, and having that pride, right? I mean, yeah. I think that's one of the coolest things is that uh, I think all of us kind of that moment that we got to get everything together, hit a power button and know that you were the person to put it together. There's yeah. no other feeling like that. And plus it's relevant. I mean, I think for a lot of people that want to be able to have a better understanding of technology, building a system goes a long way. So as we see this, it's not only being something beneficial and useful, but it can help you to edify and kind of learn a lot more down the road. And also learning software once you get it all built. I mean, yep, all exactly. that. So I noticed that the, the, the booth is very sleek and minimal this year. You've got yep. a, you know, a few demo systems around. And, yep. Uh, so we, we tried to focus off a little bit of kind of form factor diversity. So yeah. we tried to show off a little bit of everything. So we have everything from a, a standard full-size ATX high performance system. We have mini ITX, we have micro ITX, we have mid tower, and then we have all kinds of different types of resolutions. So we got 4K, we got 2560, we have 2560 by 1080. We've got surround, right? We've got everything from gaming to HCPC, DVR, cutting the cord high resolution audio playback. So we wanted to try to give a little bit of everything, but keep it realistic and also keep it accessible to be able to show everybody something that's actually achievable, not something that's super crazy, but just also have enough that's engaging and interesting for people to come out and check out. Well, man, I, I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you. No, you thank but, you so uh, much. Thanks, th for thanks to Asus mind. for you know, really coming out and supporting the DIY community. That's where Definitely it all starts always. and that's what it's all about. All right, we found Mike with SparkFun. And uh, you guys are doing some crazy things with the uh, Edison platform here, and also with some Ar you got Arduinos over here, all kinds of things, right? We have a we have an Arduino breakout board for the Edison that makes the Edison easy to use, like an Arduino. We also have a whole series of SparkFun blocks to go with the uh, the Edison. Each one of these adds a different function to the Edison. So, for instance, you can add pulse width modulation, IMU support. You can add analog input motor control, all of these different things allow you to stack up and make yourself a little system out of the Edison, keep it really nice and small, low power, easily deployable internet of things. The Edison's got built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Okay, built-in Wi-Fi as well? Oh, Built-in nice. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, all on this. Are these stackable? They're stackable. Um, they're stackable and interchangeable, so there's not like a specific order that they have to go stacked up in. You can just, right. whatever order suits your needs. Nice. Uh, what's something that you use this for? We've got this uh, fun little uh, OLED breakout board. It's the same LED, uh, OLED display from the MicroView uh, that had a big Kickstarter recently. Um, and I'm really looking forward to making a multiplayer ad hoc network game with a few of these and a few Ed Edisons, yeah. uh, getting them all on the same sort of ad hoc uh, Wi-Fi network at one time <laughs> and seeing what sort of crazy multiplayer game we can come up with. I think I that's mean, going to be a really fun project. What, what, what game do you want to do first? I was thinking something like Asteroids or maybe multiplayer Pong, oh, you oh, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pong would be good. Yeah, four-player Pong. Everyone puts Doom on everything, though. I guarantee you, someone's going to put Doom you on it. You probably can. I mean, you could probably comp compile it. It's an x86 processor, yeah. So, uh, so it it'll run just about anything. And a dual core atom. I mean, that's easily could do it. Yeah. So, right. pretty slick. Awesome, Mike. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you. I'm trying to check out Circuit Maker. Now, Circuit Maker is a piece of software for Windows and also for Mac. And uh, what it allows you to do is easily make a circuit. You start over here with, you know, just designing your circuit, and then you go into the software, and, uh, you know, after you've, you've figured something out, you put it all together. And what's interesting about this is there's a huge community uh, for collaboration. So once you, you go online, it's all open source. Let's say you want to work on something, I don't know, for uh, audio or whatever. So you, you make your circuit, and then someone else can download it. Uh, and, and, and start from there and, and, do, and make changes. A whole bunch of people can collaborate. Or you can go online and take something that someone else has already been working on, and here it is in the software, and then you can expand upon it, change it, modify it. So it's just a really innovative platform for people out there, uh, and it seems to be a pretty easy way to get started in making 
technical I see is like this. I see you. Uh, we stopped by Digi to check out the XB that's running the Zigbee platform. Kane, what the hell is this? Uh, well, this is a prototyping board. This is, your, this is your XB. It is running the Zigbee communications protocol. Basically, it is a modular communications platform for anything. You can you build a device, you, can, you put this onto an Arduino. They've got, in the, the prototype here, they've got, uh, it's a wireless mesh technology. I, I could just, it makes my head hurt what you can do with this. You could use this for uh, a car manufacturer, could use this to, to replace all their PLCs. You could use this in your home automation, like X10 stuff. We use this for a lot of different stuff. It's just, it is a wireless communication. So if you set up a device that does something and you want it to talk to something over there, you would use this to communicate between this and that. And then if you wanted to add a third device, so if you wanted this to talk to that and then that to talk to another device, like this here is a light ambient light sensor. So you set the sensor off, it sends communication across the, the wire, wireless, and then it uh, does something, whatever you want it to do. It's, you can basically use this board to program it to do whatever you want it to well, do. Well, right? no, I mean, this this specifically. Not program it, but you no, this specifically this, 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 this is just a communications module. So this would be like your network interface card, but it's using the Zigbee protocol. This right here is just a prototyping board that uses. Uh, you, know, you can plug this directly into, and you can utilize this to, to make a prototype for whatever you're trying to do. You can also get, there's, they've got a shield for Arduino, and he was showing me something that they, they're talking about. It's kind of hush-hush. It's actually like a, instead of a shield for an Arduino, it's a Arduino that fits to this form factor. So it is the same size when it was an Arduino. It was pretty nifty. What? I look forward to that, because that's, you can make the entire thing like this. You could, you could use this to, like, you know, create a... A cellular. I'm sorry, I can't talk anymore. The NSA will have me. All right, for more information, uh, it's going to be digi.com slash XB kit. There you go. Okay, so. All right. So we're going to sonicate your finger. She's going to sonicate my finger. It's like talking to the hand. <laughs> sonication is punishable by death in Leviticus. You have to sign this waiver first. What's happening? I'm getting spoken to. It tells me that uh, it's it's really angry. Kind of like it's kind of bitter. It's kind of bitter? Oh, we're making bitters. Yeah. You're bittering his hand. So... Kane's already bitter. So you yeah, well, you're a curmudgeon. Bitters as uh, a bunch of herbs, roots, ingredients, steeping in alcohol for two months. Um, that's a technique that's worked very well for the last thousand years, but we've uh, expedited the process a little bit. We're incorporating sound waves uh, through this ultrasonic bath. We use the sound waves to lyse the cells uh, at, a, at a molecular level, at a cellular level, to release uh, the different phytochemicals into our extract. So we can make an expedited blend that's a lot more potent than what you would be able to get just steeping it for, for two months. Um, what we have here is a, a rotary evaporator, um, which is which is down at the moment. But um, this is all part of our uh, of our process where we're mixing um, the modern and the traditional. So bitters are a practice that dates back as far as, as uh, traditional uses of plants in many cultures. You can often travel around and, and find plants steeping in alcohol as a way to to treat whatever ails you, either uh, something for digestion or uh, rheumatism or for cough or fever. So we um, are inspired as botanists by the different parts of the world where we do our research and our field work. And we like to communicate the stories of the plants and the cultures that we encounter through cuisine and through cocktail bitters. So our bitters are uh, used as cocktail and soda flavorings and each contains about a dozen different species. Uh, altogether, the nine blends that you see here include 150 different species of plants from all around the world. So, would you like to try any? Yes. Let's try them, yes. <laughs> I haven't seen one of these since I was five. <laughs> you know, the fact that you put it on this one is fascinating. This is the chai, Jolakia, which is a masala chai, black and ghost peppers. I am already sold. I don't think I want anything else. I want this one. Can I just take it home with me? Naga warriors were a, a group of warriors in northern India um, that were said to, to take this, um, this pepper, which was actually, even though chili peppers are native to South America, 
in the last 500 years since they were introduced, they've been bred to increasing levels of hotness in India. So now the world's hottest, well, now it's the world's third hottest pepper. Scorpion pepper, then the, what the, is the Trinidad scorpion. Trinidad scorpion, and then this last year was the Carolina reaper. Thank you. But this was the you first one. Happens. Yeah, you guys are good. <laughs> This is the first to pass the 1 million Scoville heat unit threshold. So you guys have been getting the spicy bitters, but now we're going to move on to the bitter bitter. This is um, Andy and Amargo. Like my ex. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, can, you can tell me what's more bitter. All right. I don't know. She's angry. So this has um, a number of different Andean superfoods. It's got uh, quinoa, amaranth, chia seed, um, lucuma, and maca root. And then it also has this little plant, um, which is hercampuri. It's a gentianella species. This is the entire plant right here, this little thing. It's very slow growing, and so it, it accumulates a lot of chemical defenses in its root, and that's why it has so many, um, so many bitter compounds in it.